Hi, I'm Garnbreak1, and this is Midgardia's Cool Crowd Funny Show. I'm here today with Banana Chan. How's it going? Hello, I'm Banana Chan. Uh, my pronouns are she, they, and he, and I am on your show once again. <laughs> it is always a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Thank you again so much for having me. Uh, I think this is, is this the fourth or fifth episode we've done together? Either five or six, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've lost track, I'm going to be honest. Uh, if, if I did go to editing, a little number will pop up right here with the actual answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very excited to be here chatting with you again. I'm glad to have you. Today you're going to tell us about the darkness at the brink of Ohio. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the darkness at the brink of Ohio is a solo horror journaling game that uses a soundtrack. Uh, and the premise of the game is it's about a local radio show um, in the surrounding area of Akron, Ohio. Uh, and um, the person who's like, you know, running the show, his name is DJ Mike. And you as a listener, uh, you are basically just like reacting to what's going on during the show. And it slowly, uh, you know, gets weirder and weirder. And the DJ gets consumed by this parasite uh, that he accidentally plays on the radio. And uh, weird stuff happens. Not to spoil anything, but yeah, weird <laughs> stuff happens. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, I've actually been to Ohio, and this sounds very plausible so far, quite frankly. Uh. Yeah, I lived in um, in Akron for a short period of time, so uh, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it is a strange place. <laughs> yeah, I uh, my partner used to live in in Cincinnati, Cincinnati uh, not Cincinnati, Cleveland, uh, so I had to fly out there fairly regularly and experience all of the wonderful joys of Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, I would name any if if there were any. Um, <laughs> there's uh, not much out there. <laughs> no, there's like the really expensive rock and roll museum. Uh, which I've been in the front lobby of, and then we decided not to pay for tickets and left. <laughs> that's that's yeah. about it. Yeah. But love, yeah. love makes it all worth it. Oh yeah. Oh, and the world's most complete Don Colostia skeleton. That's there. That's there too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I I enjoy I enjoy dinosaurs and other nature museum stuff. Anyway, awesome. the darkness, the darkness at the, at the brink of Ohio. Stellar name, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. It was inspired by a road trip that uh, I took with Doug Lewandowski. We were, I think we were headed to Gen Con from New Jersey. And uh, he said something about like the darkness at the edge of Ohio. And I was like, that's a really good name. <laughs> and so um, basically took that name, uh, changed the word edge to brink because uh, the festival that's happening in uh, the show um, I realized that using edge fest edge fest is already like a like a thing in real yeah. life so i was like okay we should just change it to brink and so now it's brink fest that's happening uh in the in the fiction having to change the name because something cool already has that title is also a very ohio experience from my understanding so you have to go with yep. like the slightly lamer version brink is a good word though i like brink thank you thank you uh yeah it's a weird weird game uh it has a lot to do with parasocial relationships uh you know hyper visibility and um yeah just cults cult of personality that's basically what the game is about so is there is there a physical edition of this as well and if so how does that work Yes. So how it works is uh, it is a book. So um, in the book, you're just basically uh, going through the different prompts and you are reading through, you know, um, the things that you're reacting to. So you as a character, you actually have three different characters to choose from. Uh, once the Kickstarter launches, there is a possibility of other characters getting introduced if we hit our stretch goals. So we all have to like write more characters. Uh, but you have an option between three different characters uh, currently. So you have the lab technician, uh, you have the gas station attendant, and you have a security guard. So you can pick and choose which character you want to play as. And based on who you want to play as, uh, the prompts are going to look a little bit different. What happens, uh, you know, in your workspace, in your area, as you're like working the late night shift, um, it's going to look a little bit different. So, uh, yeah, depending on what, who you pick, it's it's an interesting time. But you're all listening to the same radio station. Nice. And it is is there like is it does the actual uh, radio playback come on like a CD or anything like that? Yeah, so the audio is actually 
uh, available on YouTube for free currently. Uh, we had a whole host of very, very cool uh, voiceover actors. So um, the guy who's playing the DJ, his uh, DJ Mike is the character. Uh, he's played by Aaron Catano Saez, one of my very good friends, one of my close friends. And previous guest uh, on the show, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> what should I talk about? I don't remember. Uh, I think it it was something podcast related, I think. It's been a while. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Um, big fan of All My Fantasy Children. That was uh, was uh, yes. All My Fantasy okay. Children and yeah. New podcast. It, it's been months. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah forgive yeah, me, Eric. No, I'm sure he will forgive you. <laughs> um yeah, so he's on um on the the soundtrack uh he plays the dj um and we also have jasmine bular aka uh, that bronze girl who uh plays um she basically does like a little bit of like a radio bumper uh which is a lot of fun uh danny quatch uh austin taylor are both in it uh they're both playing uh uh callers so basically like you know people randomly calling in for uh devil's night trivia which is what's happening during the show as you're listening in and our final guest uh is gavin stenhouse who was an actor on black mirror um i believe he was also on kung fu uh he plays the parasite who uh who succumbs who basically like consumes um uh the dj right on a nice yeah. cast you got going on there very very cool cast uh we also have some really good music so um most of the music so i did all the audio editing so a lot of the music was taken from artlist uh which is this uh, website that i use for um for audio editing and you know music and stuff i used to use artlist for my corporate videography job uh but now i use it for my <laughs> Kickstarter videos and like my promo materials uh but we also license some music from mabel harper uh she is uh, she works under the alias don't do it neil um she's very talented incredibly talented uh musician artist um uh game designer as well and so uh, very happy to have her on, and uh, we also have Omar Starr. Uh, their music is incredible; like it's just fantastic. Uh, Omar is also a, a game designer, and so uh, they've done stuff uh, previously on Rap Gods uh, and a couple other board games. And finally, we also have David Jones Krause, who is an amazing uh, musician. Uh, he crafted the the cursed song that plays over the airwaves uh and yeah i am a huge fan of his work right on i, I do find it a little funny that um the gas station attendant is one of one of the uh playbooks i want like that's not quite the word but you know what i mean i yeah. uh i used to be a gas station attendant all alone by myself playing welcome to night veil vale behind me <laughs> uh while customers were around and everything only That's one amazing. ever noticed that something weird was up. <laughs> that is incredible. I we have to chat after this for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll be evaluating your uh, your gas station attendant uh, oh, for yeah. authenticity. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll send you a copy of the game. And oh, we'll chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, banana. I really appreciate that. Every time you come on is for a wildly different project. Like, I think the two closest are this and Forgery, and they are still pretty out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, um, honestly, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, I had been wanting to do, like, a game about a late night, something, you know, set during, like, a late night thing right um i also had this other game that used a soundtrack uh it was heavily inspired by um by juggernaut so juggernaut uses like sort of like a soundtrack it's, it's more of like an mp3 where it's like you play the mp3 and it pretends to be like the machine that you're collecting uh you're taking cards from that tell you the future uh that's what juggernaut is but um i was heavily inspired by that and i was also heavily inspired by uh uh ribbon drive by avery alder um and so that game uses uh basically like you're you're 
getting together like a bunch of mp3s or like a bunch of songs that uh you know different players are excited for and you're just on a road trip and you're playing this um this game and so it does take a lot of inspiration from those two games um also takes a lot of inspiration from uh five nights at freddy's <laughs> and uh and uh, several other different uh media such as like ponty pool uh, yes Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, I've I've been waiting to ask. Like, have you seen Ponty Pool, which is the opposite of this game? Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it's actually pretty similar. Um, I'm not going to give away too much, but the ending is kind of similar in some ways. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. If you're watching this and haven't seen Ponty Pool, I would highly recommend Ponty Pool. Yeah. It's a lot like this game. <laughs> <laughs> like not in a not in a you know say it's derivative way, but like there are very there are similar themes going on here. And my God, Ponty Pool is a good movie. Yeah, it's Ponty really Pool. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite thing about Ponty Pool is that it is, it it just uses like the same space. It only uses one space, and everything is audio driven. And so it's like the fear that's created, like the horrors that you know um, that exist, like you you as the audience member like you're experiencing that fear and that horror through like the person or the the characters that are on um that are uh not on stage like on screen it, yeah right um and so it's like it doesn't reveal too much which is like something that i'm really excited for like horror that doesn't reveal a lot and it's all like audio driven um except for like maybe the last few yeah uh, the last little like, bit you just have to yeah, yeah. But, yeah. like, even then there's, you know, sweeping camera shots around and, like, you get to see, like, the producer's desk now and again and stuff. Which, apparently, there's a copy of Snow Crash on as a homage oh. to where the themes of the film come from, but I've never noticed it, so I don't know. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, awesome. um, I, I used to work at a theater and apparently a couple of months before I got employed there, uh, they showed Pontypool and everybody on the, ca uh, on the staff saw it multiple times, so... It's so good. It's it's so good. Also, if you have to watch it multiple times, maybe it's like um kind of over this movie, but yeah. Personal yeah. personally love this movie. <laughs> I uh I'm probably gonna watch it again in the near future after this actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, for sure. Also it takes place in Canada, which is a big plus in my opinion. <laughs> yep. Is it Ponzi Pool, Ontario? Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, I won't I won't spoil the the important parts of the film, but uh, the fact that it is near the Ontario and Quebec border is uh, substantially important to later parts of the film. Yes, that is very true. I like completely forgot about that. That's like very. That's actually a pivotal moment in the film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that and like Bon Cop, Bad Cop, two two great two of the great Canadian films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I the cover art is sick, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. Like you the look at that cover, you know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah, the illustrator, uh, he's fantastic. He's actually um, a locally based uh, artist from here. So I live in Seattle now, uh, but um, yeah, the artist is Michael Croteau. Uh, I believe his handle on Instagram is. Uh, macabre croteau or something like that sorry sorry if i'm butchering it michael uh but yeah i'll i'll send you the link to that later but uh yeah we have two illustrations on board we have michael who did the cover art uh and robert richberg who is a um a friend of mine from college uh he's doing the interior art so super excited for that is it possible to get like a t-shirt or a sticker of dj mike from the cover there because yeah that'd be awesome <laughs> Like I'm just saying. Actually, uh, I could go through the stretch goals if you would like me Hell to yeah. talk about them. Okay. Uh, where did I put the stretch goals? I am going through the actual Kickstarter, which is not up yet. Um, so uh, actually, let me, I'll go through the tiers. So um, this is like before anything has gone live. Uh, but right now um, we have, I believe, five tiers. So the first tier is casual listener. You get like the PDF fan. You get the, um, for $30, you get like the physical copy and like the digital copy. Uh, at $50, you get the physical, digital, 
copy of the game, you also get a journal, um, which has uh, the Brinkfest logo on it. Um, and you also get a beer cozy with the Infernal Brewery logo on it, which is a fake brewery. Um, Brinkfest, Infernal Brewery, they're both like, you know, in-game uh, things that, um, yeah, we just basically like made fake, uh, fake brands for everything. Um, at the $100 level, you get a t-shirt that says Brinkfest, or sorry, 106.6 the brink on it um and you also get like everything that i just mentioned earlier and uh six printed photos that you can keep by your desk at work uh so that's a part of the game as well you get to like you know look at the you have to choose like between some photos to like keep by your desk at work oh, wow. um or wherever you're working from um and then our last uh tier is at three hundred dollars you get everything i just mentioned you also get a poster a signed poster uh by dj mike um and you also get a uh a flexi disc uh so it's like a thin disc uh with the cursed song on it um it's sort of like an lp but um you know for listeners who don't know or sorry uh for viewers who do not know uh it's just like a small disc um and it only has like one song on it um but that is also a part of the pledge level um and you also get a uh a custom audio message from aaron aka dj mike on a little usb uh so you can keep that wherever you go uh, so yeah, those are some of our, uh, our tiers, um, or pledge levels in terms of stretch goals, if we hit, uh, so the funding goal is $8,000. Uh, if we hit 9,500, then each, uh, fan pledge level or higher. So all the physical ones, uh, they get a DJ mic button. So, uh, what that looks like, it could be DJ Mike's face on a little button, um, or it could be something else. We're, we're trying to figure that out right now. Um, but at 11,000, you get a bumper sticker, uh, with every pledge level, uh, every, uh, physical pledge level. And at 13,500, uh, you get a new character to play as. Um, who's the technical support specialist because nice. they also work late nights yeah <laughs> you're gonna bankrupt me banana <laughs> listen some of the stuff i'll just like send over like i'll send you the game if you want it i appreciate that a lot uh we'll, we'll see how bad shipping prices get <laughs> <laughs> God, the, the the eyes. Like, I have it on my other monitor just to the left, and, like, DJ Mike is just continuously staring deep into my soul. <laughs> yeah. The, Michael did an incredible... It's funny because it's, like, DJ Mike and the yeah. illustrator's Michael. Uh, yeah, Michael did an incredible job on the cover, so I'm very excited for all of it. His work is... It's really good. It's sort of, like, got that scratchy look to it, um, which I really like. It's it's incredible. Like I, I cannot sing the praises of this art enough. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um yeah, I think uh he did an incredible job. Like he's uh if you look at his other work, he's done stuff. Um he's done like a lot of fan art for like Sandman. Um and yeah, it's like mostly like darker, more horror type stuff that he has done in the past. So yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> Also, I greatly and, appreciate the concept of Cursed Song on a flexi disc. by the way. Good stuff. Yeah, I hope, I know that, like, not a lot of people have record players, but I, I hope people find a way to play it. Um, I sure don't, yeah. but I, I do own one album on vinyl, so. Oh, it's, uh, cool. It was also a Kickstarter project, actually. It was I Fight Dragons' is, uh, Project Atma. Uh, oh, it was the cool. first Kickstarter I ever backed, I think. Uh, nice. Yeah, it it's on a shelf down here, and I try not to move it because it's covered in glitter, and that glitter is not secured super well. Like the the jacket's covered in glitter. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not the disc itself. So how did you how did you come come across the idea of you know a, a host getting infected by a parasitic curse song and like slowly going weird over the course of a night for for a journaling game? Yeah, I was thinking a lot about um, like internet stuff. <laughs> Sorry, that was very vague. Um, to be a, a little bit more uh, clear on that, I was thinking a lot about Twitch. Um, Twitch 
uh, parasocial relationships and also just like the idea of like an internet chat room. Um, and I was thinking about how, you know, how you have chat in Twitch and you have chat and like YouTube live or whatever. Um, I was thinking a lot about that and just like the way that it functions where, you know, you're sort of like this, oftentimes you are an anonymous person behind a screen um, who's responding to someone who is performing on camera. And in some ways, this is what like that game is, this game is sort of like, where it's just like, you know, you have all of these performers, you have all of these people who have, um, who are playing music or like, you know, talking or, uh, or performing and they don't really know what's going on on the other side, right? Um, but the, on the other side, they're like definitely reacting to this. They're, you know, uh, for some of them, they're like, this is something that they look forward to, right? Um, and so I was thinking a lot about that, um, but then going a little bit more on like the toxic end of things where it's like, you know, oftentimes uh, there can be fans that go a little too far um, and also just like understanding that, you know, this character, DJ Mike, he's not someone that you know, he's not like a friend, right? Um, but he might play with the, you know, the fan base or like talk to you as if, you know, you are a friend, uh, regardless of whether or not, you know, um, he's actually talking directly to a person. He's just like talking, you know, into the airwaves. And so I was thinking a lot about that. Um, and just like, yeah, like going back to that cult of personality where it's like, you know, there's so much visibility in such a small segment of the, like the, you know, the internet, um, or in this case, like, um, like a small town where like other people outside of the sphere would not have any idea about like DJ Mike or like, you know, um, this niche personality. But in this space, they are DJ Mike, um, you know, representing like all these people, they are like, super visible they're hyper visible everything that they do is like you know broadcast to to the world um but the world again is like very small and so what does that look like how does that manifest uh yeah. and yeah it's just kind of kind of weird and kind of creepy yeah radio radio personalities are one of the weird ones where it's like distinctly local like if i told you how upset i am that uh the toby and warren show with warren and toby on 100.3 the bear is no longer uh no longer around because they didn't renew their contracts that means nothing to you but to me big deal bring back toby <laughs> and warren <laughs> <laughs> that name sounds familiar uh i mean it's toby and warren two separate people yeah yeah wait uh, i just i just enjoy the name the uh the toby and warren show with warren and toby just oh, it sticks yeah. you know yeah so i used to live in um in mississauga in ontario Sog, yes <laughs> yeah i wonder if i heard that show uh maybe i mean yeah. i'm out out by edmonton so i don't know where they were before that but yeah who knows yeah i i don't know how uh how often radio hosts move around honestly but maybe yeah who knows found them enjoyable they had some good gimmicks mm -hmm. <laughs> i also i also do text into my local radio station occasionally so you know i'm feeling feeling the vibe of this game yeah absolutely like i am also a very big fan of uh Previously, I was a big fan of WFMU. I mean, I still am a big fan of WFMU. They're a local radio station in Jersey, um, specifically, like, I, I think it's Northern Jersey. I don't know if, like, um, people down or people down south, like South Jersey, I don't know if they'll get the radio signals for it, but um, WFMU is, like, a local, like, very... Uh, like what's the word they're very chaotic like they have polka night or polka days <laughs> or polka hours and they would have um one of my favorite radio djs uh his name is um clay pigeon and he's like <laughs> very this, good yeah he's he plays like early morning like on the way to when i used to commute into the city like i would listen to him 
and he would go all out like he would play music and he would also like put on different voices uh to create like different characters for this weird like fake um like traffic thing that he would do uh, it was like a traffic report but he would like you know create drama between these characters there's like a little soap opera between like three or four of them uh he does like you know all the sound effects uh and yeah like i just really enjoyed listening to him he, like he was one of my favorite radio djs uh these days like in seattle i listen to uh k kexp um they're a local radio station here uh but yeah i miss listening to clay pigeon on wfmu <laughs> it's it's a banger of a name as well yeah he's great he is fantastic i love listening to him yeah like if every radio station develops their own weird little like gimmicks and giveaway contests and stuff sometimes incredibly unduly complex giveaway cont contests uh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah Just gotta keep that radio station afloat <laughs> yeah I actually, I actually won something from the bear a couple of months back. <laughs> Where'd you uh, win? I won tickets to that one ventriloquist who has like the vaguely racist puppets. Uh, I did, you know, the one. I didn't go. Jeff Dunham. <laughs> Jeff Dunham. Yeah, Jeff Dunham still canceled to her, and I'm like, I'm, I gave them to my father who enjoyed the show. <laughs> That's an appropriate move. Yeah. <laughs> There was a trivia question. I knew the answer. Like, what am I going to do? Not text him? <laughs> yeah. I feel like Jeff Dunn tickets are very appropriate for, like, that demographic. It's like, dads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He went with his girlfriend. They had a good time, you know? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I won, but I don't really want this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. I wouldn't really want Jeff Dunham tickets either. Jeff Dunham and twenty dollar beer. What a what a combination. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Beer at events is stupid. Oh god. But yeah. what I do want is the darkness at the brink of Ohio. Which uh when will that be coming to when will that be going live on Kickstarter? That will be come hopefully. Uh if all things go smoothly, May seventh is the target date. Um, so hoping to get this live uh, by then. Um, the other things that are happening between now and then, uh, right now we're in April, uh, between now and May 7th, um, I have a few folks who have uh, generously donated their time to play the game um, on Twitch. So uh, the I don't know if I should say it. I'm, I'm like wondering if I should like keep it as a surprise or if I should just say it. Maybe I'll just say it. Um, <laughs> the folks who are going to be doing the actual plays uh, are Diana of the Rose, uh, Hamazama Kun, and uh, D and D Imposter. So um, they're all going to be playing this on uh, on their own Twitch platforms. Uh, I think this is going to be the first game that D&D Imposter is like playing ever on Twitch because uh, they're just like launching a Twitch. Uh, but they're also going to be um, showcasing this on YouTube, I believe. Uh, and yeah, you'll be able to catch it. I'll also put links into the actual body of the Kickstarter so that way uh, folks can see actual plays of the game and how it works. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm very excited. I, I think they're going to do an amazing job. Like I've seen, I played with them. I've played with all three of them. Uh, I've uh, also just like, you know, seen the stuff that they've done. And so, yeah, they're very fun. They're so cool. Uh, and yeah, I'm just really excited to be working with them. I think I threw out all of my old gas station attendant uniform stuff, so I can't bust that out and stay in character. Uh, it's unfortunately. A really... <laughs> Sorry? It's a part of the game. <laughs> I mean, me. you're not you're not required. It's optional to dress up as your character. <laughs> it's okay. I I can look uh, unkempt and depressed, and that's basically the gas station attendant experience. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. You could also, if you wanted to, play the other two characters. 
Um, it's funny because one of my uh, best friends, she's also like a lab technician and uh, she was like, yeah, I'm going to go through your game and see how accurate it is to my experience. And I was just like, I don't think this is going to be accurate at all to your experience because like you're technically not allowed to listen to music <laughs> when you're working <laughs> as like a lab technician. Um, but yeah, she was just like, eh. <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I've never been trusted with any hazardous materials aside from propane, so I have no idea how that goes. Don't mess with propane, by the way. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> it's, I had to take safety courses, and it's weird to me that it's in every backyard. That's that's all I'm going to say on the matter. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> I have some weird fears, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> But um, but yeah, no, like Mike's eyes are still staring at me. I've got to tab off to something else over there. Good God, oh, yeah. I can just like constantly see it out the corner of my eye. Oh God, yeah, that art is very creepy. Maybe um, I don't want a sticker of him actually. <laughs> well, I mean, if we hit that stretch goal, everyone's gonna get one. So <laughs> yeah, or at least all the physical pledge levels are gonna get one. <laughs> uh, but yeah no it's you do good work and like i would recommend this to anybody on on it on the strength of the premise and the fact that you're the one working on it like it's good stuff thank you i really appreciate that yeah i, I hope folks like it um it is a weirder one and uh if anyone's interested that soundtrack is on youtube for free so if they want to listen ahead and just hear it it's there. <laughs> also, this is one of the projects that I think the Kickstarter model is perfect for. Like, it is a fairly niche, you know, limited run kind of thing. Like, presumably this is not going to be, you know, have a gigantic print run and get sold in Walmarts across the country as a new pop culture sensation. But, like, it's good stuff, and it deserves to exist. And I'm glad that, you know, crowdfunding has allowed these sorts of projects to be way more possible than they would have been, like, how long ago did the Kickstarter start? Like 20 years ago. Let's go 20 years ago. This wouldn't have been... Uh... No, Do you they, think so? They started like 15 years ago, I think. Oh my god, that's been a long time. When was... When, when, uh, uh, what have I been doing? I'm trying for... to type, but there's a cat in the way, which is making it a little hard. When was Kickstarter? No, I, I believe it. 15 years? That sounds... Honestly, that sounds accurate. They were founded on April 28th, 2009. So yeah, oh. about 15 years. Like, I don't yeah. know when they went live, but, like, yeah. That is wild. Yeah. It's... Time flies when you're having fun. I feel old, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I remember when it was uh, the new big thing, and... Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I really hope people like this. Um, this, like you said, it is very niche. It's very small. It's not going to go to Walmart um, or Target unless Walmart or Target tries to pick it up. That's call cool me. too. Well, call yeah, banana. Exactly. I got nothing. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I doubt uh, this is going to go anywhere beyond like local game stores. Um, I'll uh, be working with our uh, distributor on trying to make it international. Um, so that, that way, you know, we're, we're not doing a lot of international shipping in general, just because it's it's very hard on an indie publisher. It's very difficult to do. Uh, so uh, we're working with our distributor to see if there's like any opportunities there. Um, but for this Kickstarter, we're not doing international. We're only doing US and Canada. Um, and so, uh, yeah. It's just not international, just just these two nations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the unfortunate mess of like shipping and dealing with that and just yeah, taxes. Sh and, shipping is yeah. marginally harder than normal right now. <laughs> yeah. For reasons beyond the scope of this uh this interview. Yeah, it's as if the world's on fire right now. Almost, but... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're not going to dwell on that. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to pretend that nothing is happening. <laughs> nothing is happening. Everything's cool. I'm sure nothing will have changed in the couple of days between when this was recorded and when this goes out. Anyway, back to the darkness at the brink of Ohio. 
So, you know, we've covered uh, voice cast and illustrations and all that. Uh, how about we talk a bit about the the unsung heroes of the TTRPG industry, the, the like, graphic design and uh, production team. Can you tell me a little bit about those folks? Yeah, um, I also just realized that uh, the two actual heroes of this are the editors. <laughs> um, That's also true, so yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, the text editors that we have are uh, Yansu Julian Kim, who I've worked with in the past on uh, several different games. We worked on the Chucky board game together, uh, which is uh, something we did in the past. Uh, I think it's out now. Actually, yes, it is out now because it's behind me. So yes, <laughs> Chucky board game. We worked on that together. Uh, and uh, the other editor we have is Karen Twelves, uh, who did the editing for Forgery as well. She's fantastic to work with. She's done editing for, uh, for Fiasco, Blades in the Dark, um, and uh, I think she's actually done uh, some other work as well with like Thirsty Sword Lesbians. She's done a lot of work in general. Um, so yeah, she's amazing. Um, and graphic designers, we have John Merchant, uh, who we've also worked in the past, uh, worked with in the past. Uh, we worked with him on Deimos Academy um, and Questlings uh, RPG. Uh, and Ruby Lavin is uh, the graphic designer for the actual book itself. Um, so she uh, was working on, I think she worked on Wander Home. Yes, uh, she was a graphic designer for Wander Home. Uh, she also did some stuff for Forgery. And finally, the production designer slash production manager uh, is my partner, Herb Furman. Uh, I feel bad for just giving him all the stuff that I don't want to do, which is talking to or communicating with like the manufacturers and like handling all of that. Uh, I give him the details and he just like communicates with them and like handles that and gives me the proofs and I prove everything. So yeah. <laughs> That's what our relationship is like. Right on. Hey, look, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it, and it's got to be her. Yep. <laughs> right on. Hey, <laughs> I had to put uh, Mike's terrifying eyes back up on on my left screen so that it lights my face, because otherwise I was way too way too dark and in shadow. But good lord, man, um, that is an eye catching cover. Like on game on game store shelves, that's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah um kudos to mike michael not like i mean i guess dj mike too um yeah kudos to michael for uh for illustrating that and yeah fantastic to work with all right and uh yeah you said that the kickstarter should be going live uh may 7th so that should be less than a month after this comes out i don't know what day this video is coming out but it'll be before may 7th i can guarantee you that Awesome. Yes. Uh, it will be coming out on May or will be um, releasing on May 7th, uh, which I believe is a Tuesday. I hope I set it up to a Tuesday. Yes, it's a Tuesday, uh, which I've heard is the prime time to launch a Kickstarter. Interesting. I have launched several Kickstarters during that time on a Tuesday in the morning. So I have not failed yet. <laughs> so maybe there's something to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, look, if it's working. <laughs> if it's working, you don't try to fix it? Or wait, is that is that how the saying goes? I, have... I don't know. Honestly, it's uh staring into Mike's eyes has uh, disturbed my cogn cognitive functions and I have no grasp of idioms anymore. Um <laughs> But I am looking forward to Brinkfest. <laughs> I am also very excited for Brinkfest. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you're if you're watching this and listening to this and uh, enjoying it as you have a nice jog down the road from the terrors that pursue you, both mentally and physically, go look at the link down in the comments, click it, hit notify me on launch, or uh, throw some money at Banana Chan and get yourself a freaky, you know, solo journaling soundtrack experience as you listen to a uh, radio host uh, go off the edge. Off the brink, as it were. Uh... That, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> Thanks. I do my best. Um, <laughs> and yes, if you're watching this, this is my best. Um... <laughs> All right, Banana, it is, uh, as always, a pleasure to have you on. And uh, I have my lovely co-hosts here, Hubble and 
and Canon, and uh, I'm sure they also like having you on. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. It's been wonderful to chat with you. Um, and I don't think Hubble or Canon heard any of what I said, but please tell them I say hello and give them lots of scritches. Oh, I will. It's uh, it's just about food time for them, and they're about to be very happy. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks for coming on, and for those of you watching, have a good night. Thanks. Bye.